welcome to my third official episode of Susan. Today I shall be continuing the story of Anton Ray. Party Committee Report. Well, we must support the National Front. Now we have a reception at the inaugural ball. I had just finished buttoning up my suit jacket when the doorbell rang. The Presidential Guard had arrived to pick us up for the inaugural ball. It was a three-decade-old tradition, breathlessly anticipated by politicians, bureaucrats, and the press. We were all excited. That is, unless you're a human rights advocate. I called on my wife, Monica, to get the children ready. Look at the mirror. I straightened my tie and took a deep breath. After tonight, there would be no turning back. Suddenly, Diana hugged me from behind, startling me. Monica had fixed her hair into an elaborate braid, woven through with ribbons. Papa, Mama told me it's time to go. Hello, darling. I'm ready. Where's your brother? I think Frank's still upstairs. She shrugged. It was almost time to leave. The big ball was started. It was starting in less than a minute. Now, where's my first baby? Monica came down the stairs. She was wearing a simple yet elegant beige sheet dress and short heels. Her hair had been neatly pinned into a shinigan, showing off the pair of earrings I had given her for our 15th anniversary. All those years, she had stayed by my side. Now we were about to begin the most challenging chapter in our lives yet. How do you do, Mr. President? Oh, I'm doing amazing. <laughs> Monica, my love. You look as gorgeous as the day we were married. Now that's the charm that got you elected. Trunk trudged down the stairs. This thing itches. Trunk tugged at the collar of his new tuxedo. He seemed ill at ease. Glad to have you with us for this big night. 
sure, Dad, I'm just dying. Go. Papa, are those people going to be around us from now on? She pointed at the presidential guards at the door of the house. These people are our friends. But yes. Swordland's most important family needs extra protection. It's all right, baby. They're here to make sure nothing bad happens to your papa. Or his family. Monica held Diana's hand. Together, flanked by the guards, we walked out the door. Halfway to the car, Frank stopped abruptly and turned toward me. Dad, do I really have to go? Wouldn't I just stay home instead? I'm nervous myself, Frank. I'd feel a lot more confident with my son by my side. Trump, you smiled reluctantly. Well, when you put it like that, sure, let's go. And of course, he began to drive, and it was a beautiful day. It was a beautiful, beautiful sunset. seemed like just a few minutes, the convoy slowed to a halt. Sergei rolled down the limousine's the limousine soundproof partition. Here we are, sir. Hope you enjoyed the drive. I did, sir. Thank you. Always a pleasure to hear that. You open the door to normally imposing palace was festooned with garish banners that nearly made it look cheerful. A line of shiny luxury sails stretched around it. Politicians, bureaucrats, and celebrities, the creme de la creme of the Swordland elite, streamed inside the building. Look out there, Mr. President. See you on the trip home. <laughs> I stepped out and immediately found myself surrounded by loud voices and camera flashes. Hordes of eager journalists thrust their porthole microphones my way. My guards fended most of them off, but one woman managed to dodge them and corner me. I recognized the Swordish Broadcasting Company logo on her press lanyard. Mr. President, Mr. President. Do you plan on working together with the opposition parties on the expected constitutional reforms? If the opposition is willing to support us. I'll try to work with everybody, as many people as I want, but... Mr. Richter clarified that as long as you support their demands of democratization, they'll work on with you on all issues with a cooperative spirit. What do you think of that statement? I can 
not comment since I haven't seen a statement yet. One more question. One of your first acts as president was to sign a campaign finance law allowing public election funds by seat in the assembly. As opposed to numero vote. Is this a deliberate attempt to fund the Communist Party and the Bluetia Workers Party? Neither of which have reached the election threshold? It's to ensure the USB has the funds we need to stay in power long enough to truly bring democracy to our country. That's enough, ma'am, said one of the guards, while nudging the reporter away from me. The path through the crowd was now open. And we quickly made our way to the entrance of the palace. At the same time, a dozen fireworks went off. It was decorated with beautiful ribbons. And swordman's colors of white, yellow, and maroon. A lush maroon carpet had rolled down the stairs. We entered the lobby and joined the throngs of people making their way towards the ballroom. Behind me, I heard a familiar voice. There they are, the most beautiful family in Sorda. Uncle Peter! Hi, Uncle Peter. It's great to see you. But you are growing faster than I and getting wiser. <laughs> Mr. President. Happy to see the familiar face, Peter. Evelyn? Peter's wife, Evelyn, approached us and shook our hands with a firmness that rallied her delicate features. Congratulations, Anton. I have to say the results were clear to me from the beginning. There's a successful woman behind every successful man. What a gentleman. Monica smiled at me. Monica, how are you? You've barely said a word. I'm more than relieved to have this roller coaster. I'm more than relieved to have this roller coaster ride over. But, but of course, now the real world begins. Ah, yes, man, managing the help, planning parties, daily trips to the salon to look your best for foreign dignitaries. Don't be so old fashioned, Evelyn. I plan to use the my powers, First Lady, to advance the position of women throughout sort. Equal rights for our sex are long overdue, wouldn't you say, Anton? Oh, God. Up to a point, yes. Oh, as long as you don't burn the roast, am I right, Peter? <laughs> Peter laughed out loudly. Monica and Evelyn both glared at us. No awkward silence descended. Diana, so. Papa, can we go? I want to see the ballroom. Of course, darling. We went to the ballroom. Inside, we were yet surrounded by another noisy crowd. Blabber mouths. Politicians. I needed to solve Swordland. I needed to get rid of it. I needed to eliminate the blabber mouths. So, I began on my walk. I was surrounded by a noisy crowd. At this time, it was the politicians who sought to appease the authority and sort of Spent the next few hours shaking hands, joining various conversations, some serious, some superficial, and making speeches. We finally settled down at our dinner table with the victims at the plan as the band started playing some slow jazz tunes. Oof. It was tiring. What? You're already tired? Uh, well. Suddenly a loud banging noise echoed from outside the ballroom. And another one. And another. Musicians stopped playing. Everyone in the room was looking around in confusion. 
Peter and I turned towards each other, realization dawning on both of our faces. Fireworks? No. Gunshots. As soon as Monica heard the word, she lunged for a seat. Get down! I shielded them. I threw myself at Monica, Diana, and Frank to shield them. Papa, what's happening? I knew it never should have gone. Chaos broke out. Some of the guests flung themselves under their tables, and others ran towards the doors, screaming. Diana burst into tears with Frank tried to comfort her, hiding the fear in his own eyes. Three more gunshots rang out loudly. Mr. President, are you all right? Carl Grazie, head of the Swordish Police Force, was running towards us. Three more police officers in decorated uniforms. They all have their guns, guns drawn. As soon as he made it to us and saw that we were unharmed, he let out a big sigh. Thank God. Hell is going on. One second, Mr. President. Johnson, follow my lead. We'll bring them to the safe room. He now turned to Monica, Evelyn, and the children, and spoke in a softer voice. But don't worry. The situation is, uh, is now under control. Please follow me. Promptly followed Carl through the winding halls and corridors of the palace. His men still their guns drawn, which did nothing to ease the tension. On the way, Peter made an attempt to break the silence. What a night! Flipped a switch on the wall and the panel opened, revealing a hidden staircase leading to a large reinforced door. Inside, a set of emergency lights flickered on. The safe room was comfortable and spacious, expensive looking labor seats. Small security monitors on the wall displayed a grainy footage of each room in the palace. There was a boardroom and a pantry collected containing enough provisions to last us months. Monica and Evelyn sat the children down and started wiping their tears. They stepped away from us. A few grunts were caused. Carl was done. He returned to me and Peter. Not the best. Not yet. So, what's the status? Carl's radio suddenly cracked light. Every second felt like an eternity as he pressed his ear to the receiver. How silent he turned to us. Good news, we are not in any danger at the moment. The, the situation has been dealt with, us, and the perimeter has been secured by the guards and the police. He glanced towards Monica Evelyn and Kenzie. If I may, sir, he gestured towards a more private corner of the room and started speaking more quietly. This is what we know so far. We have confirmed that two people were gunned down in front of the fires. The attacker is one of them, and we have reasons to believe he was working alone. He fired three shots at an MP, one to the head, two to the body, instantly killing him. Residential guards at the palace immediately shot and killed the attacker. He had not been identified yet, and will require an investigation. 
The MP that was killed was identified as Bernard Circus. This is you, Janton. It'll cause a lot of problems. A lot of problems. cigarette and took a deep drag. I was going to see this through and keep my family safe. At all costs, I crushed the cigarette on the ashtray. Damn, it's cost. It was a presidential war. So be it. I guess I have made myself clear. I did not believe in democracy. I believed in the integrity of the Republic. But to secure this Republic, a true Republic, from threats. situation room was gloomy. My cabinet members were gathered to discuss the shooting outside the palace. Lilius presented the immediate, the initial report. Bernard Circus was shot dead at 9.03 p.m. in front of the palace gates. He was an elected independent member of the assembly and, as you know, a famous communist. She is about the last word out to so distaste. The guards at the scene were 50 meters away and immediately took action by re responding and killing the assailant, who was identified as a member of the nationalist organization, Young Souls. The president and his family were unharmed, praise God. An MP shot near the palace. 
is absolutely unacceptable. But what were the motivations of such a plan? Our investigators are suspecting political assassination since the young swords have been threatening the communists for some time. This such a dangerous atmosphere where the left versus right political violence of the 1920s might spark once again. A return to those days would be devastating. Coups are the reason why our country stagnated for a decade. Neomorn, the Minister of Justice side. The Red Youth have condemned the killing, but didn't stop there. They promised revenge. This will in turn spark further aggression with the young swords. The whole cycle started because Bernard Circus expressed his views. We can't simply look away. Bernard had been all... had always been one of the only members of the Justice Ministry truly deserving. She had survived countless attacks on her character, was fighting corruption within the ministry, and rising to power had only compounded her sense of moral duty. Freedom of expression is part of our constitution. We can't have anyone, let alone an MP, shot for voicing different opinions. The Malyanovist ideology is that the Red Youth promotes poisonous threats to our country too. We should be cautious. Agreed. And we are always watchful of internal threats, like the banned Communist Party members who are supportive of such an ex of a similar agenda with the Red Youth. wouldn't resort to unconventional means if they were represented in our assembly. The high electoral threshold and bans are making this, these factions extreme. Minister of Defense Joseph Lancia granted in disapproval, towered over the rest of us in full military uniform, his many war medals conspicuously on display. Don't be stupid, woman. These organizations speak against the state. They have a union. Sortland, it's also the same boat. I wouldn't be surprised if United Contana has a hand in supporting all of them. United Contana caused the communist power. We should refrain from making this issue a political one from the start. We'd only add fuel to the fire. It's a political. It is political, though, isn't it? Yes, but we need to calm the country. If we take sides, we could escalate the situation further. There aren't many sides, the state versus its enemies. Regardless, a full investigation on all involved parties is underway. We'll find the subversives and punish them soon enough, Mr. Preston. I'll do my best to help coordinate the administrative tasks. Justice will be served and the rule of law will return to this country stronger than ever. Only if we stay vigilant in the country, as a country, we must think of the upcoming budget. I agree. Internal stability must be maintained. Our security funding might... Well, our security funding might need to be increased. I'm sure the Minister of Interior has already taken the necessary precautions. You can be 
assured that our police units and intelligence units are on increased threat condition. Nobody should be able to move a finger against government officials. Lucian then took some notes after checking the latest newspapers and reports. Seems that the tensions between the communists and nationalists will escalate further. It'll be very difficult to pass any meaningful change if there's a chaos in the country. We'll make it through and deliver our promises. Hell yeah, prison break. This'll be it for today, then. We'll convene again soon. Thank you all, and keep us updated. The meeting ended. It was a sad tale. I decided to read some of those. Of course, there's a murder at the palace. I let the situation continue. A few days passed. I decided to handle, hand over power to Carol Price. Must I come from Monica, Frank, and the other? short state of national emergency, then I declared it to be over. Well, not a national emergency. Only an emergency with great also on problems. First of all, I checked the news. The economists wanted us to bail out businesses. Radical said goodbye to Bernard Circus. I mean, look, it was a terror attack. It was evil. But it's not. It's not. Right. We have to get them both. And if the communists make revenge, decided to advocate for unity. Also, our post is a bit less biased. situation I had was a dinner with the family at home. 
It was a long, long day in the past. I was finally home. I think Serge walked through the front gate, nodding at the two guards as I went by. Even as I turned the door knob, I heard Diana running down the stairs to greet me. I opened the doors, and there she was, standing in front of me with expectant eyes. Papa, you're home. There, my beautiful princess. I lifted Diana up and hugged her whilst trying to put the keys in the tray next to the entrance. She was growing fast. Lifting her up was no longer as easy as it once was. Oh, that's enough of that. You're a big girl now. Where's your mother? Mom is in the kitchen making dinner. Put her down and her expression turned serious. Papa, are the, are the bad men gone? There was only one bad man, Diana. He's gone now. Okay, Papa. Diana dashed down the hallway. Mama, Papa's here. Monica appeared next to the kitchen door. She was wearing an apron and holding a spatula in her hand. Diana, what did I tell you? No running in the house. Yes, Mama. Monica approached me and kissed me on the cheek. Tantalizing smell wafted from the kitchen behind her. Darling, you shouldn't have. What do we have a cook for? I felt like going grocery shopping, just like old times. And besides, she can't make your favorite like I am. You mean? Yes, Lorsha. Lorsha was a Lachaban speciality, usually reserved for special occasions. Rich seafood stew with a heavy garlic and paprika cake. It was absolutely my favorite dish, especially paired with kimchi, a potent, unfiltered wine from Bel. I kissed her in the cheek. I just wanted to cheer everyone up a bit. Her smile faded, and she lowered her voice so that Yana would hear. Especially after what happened at the ball. I'm worried, Anna. Your cross, the children, and for the country. Mama? Yes, sweetheart? I'm hungry. We'll eat in a minute. Will you help set up the table? And can you tell Frank to come down for dinner? He's been sulking in his room all day. Monica started taking out the china whilst I headed upstairs to fetch my son. Loud rock and roll music echoed from the hallway down the hallway from his room. Caught a faint hint of cigarette smoke. I knocked on the door. There was no response. I knocked on it again. There was no response. I banged to the door. Stereo in Frank's room clicked on. All right, all right. He unlocked and opened the door. What do you want? Turn those records up louder next time, won't you? Don't think the neighbors heard. Aha. Frank headed downstairs to the dining room and I pulled after him. The table was prepared and Monica was glad cooled onto the planks. Come on, Hen. Have a seat. It won't be as tasty if it's cold. As we started eating, the room went quiet. Monica's cooking was as delicious as ever. I had the feeling that it was not the reason that nobody spoke. Monica broke the silence. Say, did you know they're refurbishing? They refurbished the grocery store? I don't know if you remember the owner. He's been there every day for the past 30 years. Can you imagine doing the same job for so long? What if you were present for 20 years, for example? I jokingly replied, why not? We could live like kings. <laughs> Monica measured me with her eyes for a moment, 
goddamn thing. Anyways, the grocer really is a nice person. He threw in some extra vegetables. My. Frong suddenly slammed his hands on his head and raised a rifle in the chariot. Monica, I am the understaffed. So this is how it's going to be? We're just gonna sit here and, like, nothing happened? Dad, you could have been killed, Mama. Could have been killed. Any one of us could have died. Diana's lower lip started trembling. Monica put her hand on the front shoulder. What would you have us do? I don't know. Talk about it, maybe? Frank got up from his seat. Frank, let's talk about it. Sit down. Do you think I would let us go down so easily? Frank smirked. No. But it's not up to you, is it? First of all, I'd like to explain. The security... Uh, it was one rogue shooter. We weren't even the target. But if we were? Frank, listen to your father. If your father says we don't need to worry, then we don't need to worry. You have to trust him. We all have to trust each other. I want him to respond. I want him to continue talking. He's my son, goddammit. I needed to talk, but... She was sweet, though. I cared for her. And she was trying to calm us all down. It seemed like Frank was at peace as well. I made plenty, plenty of rash decisions when I was his age. I was angry with the kingdom. You made plenty. You make plenty of rash decisions now, too. Frank's not the only one who's scared at. I worry too, Monica. Things will. Yes, things may escalate. got up, stood behind me, and massaged my soldier her shoulders for a moment before leaving me alone at the dining room. Sat alone at the table, drained the glass of kimchi. Had I been lying to Frank and Diana? Was the threat to my family truly over? Time would tell. Thus ends. Saw another page from economists in the wrong economy. Political chaos. Protests in Groovy. Protests across the world. Well, it turned from noon to midnight. And thus ends my tale. Goodbye.